Welcome to the Job Skin video, Pleating, How and When. You may be wondering why we've put this video together. There's four main reasons. Firstly, we want to address the general confusion about what pleating is, when you pleat, where you pleat, and how you pleat. The second reason is to make sure you know how to record a pleat on the forms. Thirdly, we want to improve your general measuring and Ultimately, we're wanting to assist you in getting good fitting garments. Let's first look at what pleating is. One of the real pluses of the Job Skin measuring system, apart from the accuracy of measuring a limb circumferentially every almost four centimetres, is the fact that all of the length measurements are taken at the same time. You're not having to take separate measurements uh, on the lateral aspect and the medial aspect from shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist or hip to knee, knee to ankle. It's all in the one requirement that the paper tape has. Um, but what the pleat actually is, is when the spine of the paper tape, that's the bit that goes along the limb, is folded at the end to adjust the length. Because not everybody's limb in, is easily divisible into four centimeters so sometimes we just need to tweak the length each paper tape the circumferential one is 3.8 centimeters apart just under four centimeters obviously but when the spine of the limb paper tape is folded that space between the circumferential tapes is reduced that's how we um, adjust for the uh, a diff alternative length on the limb so when do you pleat? Well, as I've said, the paper tapes are the primary indicator for garment length for the limbs. But if a limb doesn't exactly fit the placement of the paper tapes, that's when you pleat. You can see on this photo here that the very top tape, if that was wrapped circumferentially, it's obviously going to be above the axilla. So it's it, it won't be able to be done perpendicular. It will be on a crazy angle. And we actually want it to mimic the very top of the garment. So where do you pleat? This is probably the most important thing I'm going to say on the video. And that is you only pleat a tape at either the distal end or the proximal end. There is absolutely no need to pleat anywhere else along the spine tape. But I know some of you feel confused by some scenarios. The first thing is when there's a significant contracture. Now there's a limit as to how much we could make a mannequin's arm contracted, but you can see that in this mannequin here, the limb is not absolutely straight, the upper limb. So what we find people often do is in an effort to try and keep the, the tapes perpendicular, when they're wrapped circumferentially is that they're kind of crumpled the spine tape is crumpled up so that the tapes are pleated around that contracture so to speak that is not required you just continue to have the circumferential tape crossing the spine tape at right angles it will be fine it doesn't matter that it fans out a bit as you can see uh, proximal to and distal to the elbow in relation to that elbow tape um, the second scenario is what about when there's marked changes in circumference in the limb? Now this is quite tricky to show on a video, so um, we're using just like a graphic here. And you can see the kind of the movey boxes here, they're simulating the tape wrapping around a limb. And you can see to start with that they start perpendicular to the, uh, the outline of the limb, but as the limb that curve goes down in order to keep it wrapping nicely you can see that this is simulated as being caught on an angle and that's not going to give you a good measurement so some people think well maybe if I just bunch the tapes up together ie put in extra pleats that will solve that problem but in fact, you don't need to do that. You continue to keep that same 3.8 centimetre gap. But if you look at that very last mauve box there, 
you can see that it's sitting a little bit below the, circum the, the uh, limb shape on the left hand side and a little bit above on the right hand side. So don't be tempted to tilt the angle of the tape. Just continue to wrap trying to keep the tapes lined up together and you will find that there is no need to pleat. Now there is one possible exception where you might pleat along the spine and that is if you are wrapping paper tapes around a component of external fixation. I apologise that is incorrect on the slide. If you've got sort of screws uh, in the way, then obviously you will need to make an adjustment. However, if you do that, please take a photo while the paper tape is still in situ so that the designers can see how those pleats relate specifically to the external fixator. Now, how do you pleat? It's actually very simple. Don't overthink it. You just slide the circumferential tape to where you want it to wrap the limb. So if we use that photo that you can see there, you just take that last tape that is unwrapped and you just slide it down the limb a bit so you can see that the spine of the tape will buckle. Uh, you can see that happening there. And then you fold that buckling of the spine paper tape so that the circumferential tape sits just where you want it to sit. You crease that fold so that you're securing it flat, so to speak. Um, then you wrap the circumferential tape and secure it just as you would any other tape. And then you secure the folded pleat. I usually use a little bit of sticky tape. But now, how do you record that? So if you have a look where that pink or red arrow is, that is the 3.8 centimetre gap between the tapes as it is standardly. However, the tape on the left is obviously a lot closer to the middle tape than the tape on the right. So we need to have a way of communicating to the designers how much closer those two tapes are. That little distance there between the two lines of the circumferential tapes, that's the distance we need to indicate. So you use another measure. You can use the endy bit of one of the circumferential tapes or you can take your retractable, retractable tape measure and you measure from the central line of one tape to the central line of the next tape. You can see that there. If I use a paper tape, my little cheap way of doing that is I use um, a zero, so like 20 or 30, so that I can easily calculate the difference so that I don't make any mistakes. And then how do you record that on the form? This is an arm form here, and you can see there is a pleat box at the top of the list of circumferential measures and a pleat box at the bottom. If you pleat at the distal end, you'll use the top box. If you pleat at the proximal end, you'll use the bottom box. And that's obviously in relation to the numbers of the tapes that you can see there on that list. If you uh, pleat at both ends, then you use both boxes. So you make the choice about where you need to enter it. You can see on that middle column there that there's been a measurement entered in the uh, the distal one. It says 18 there. Um, or in this case, there's also been a pleat made at the proximal end and 17 is written there. And that's it. That's all we need to let you know about pleating. Um, as always, if you have any queries, then you can let us know.